What we see now, and this is probably a really big one, uh, that'll be the wave of sleep problems uh, in the next 10 years will be the teenagers who are on their devices. Um, and, and adults, right? We're all guilty of going on our devices. I've There's... actually made a point not to just, I don't touch my phone from 7 p.m. On, unless I have to or something urgent comes through. I don't. And, like, <laughs> and the only time I do is when um, I actually can't sleep. So then I'll jump on and go, okay, what's, what's happening on Instagram? Or vice versa. The only time she can't sleep is when she's on her phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, so there's, there's a couple of things there, right? Um, so you always hear online about bright light. Yeah. yeah. Now the bright light will, will uh, waken the, the body clock up mm -hmm. because the body clock is designed to um, take signals from the environment. Um, and one of those signals to be awake is light. And light goes on different, uh, is different across um, the spectrum. And so the most powerful <clears throat> time giver to the body clock is is the is the kind of bluey white light that comes off or bluey green light that comes off our phones and our leds so um so you also have leds in your in your house these days as well like those lights so but but you know if you really dive down into the research again it's probably only p pushes your it delays your time to fall asleep by about 10 minutes on average yeah, okay. but, but if you think about it it's actually about 50 percent longer time to fall asleep because we sort of say on average it might take someone maybe 20 20 minutes to fall asleep is, is normal so then now you're taking 30 minutes to fall asleep which can um be annoying but but the things the, the two other things that we don't think about when it comes to our devices is first of all you know if you're watching a if you're like oh i can't sleep i'm going to watch something on netflix or something like that right you don't tend to stop it in the middle of the the movie and go oh Crap, I'm sleepy. I'm going to go to sleep now, right? You watch it to the end. So that pushes sleep off. Yeah. So we don't, and then you're suddenly getting inadequate sleep. Now, and then the last one, which is massively underestimated, is just like you're saying, Maria, when you, when you jump on your phone, right, and you start scrolling through Instagram, well, what are you doing? Like, your these devices are designed i'm a behavioral psychologist right so back in the day when you left when you leave university my lecturer used to say you could go to the states and now you'll definitely find employment in the gambling industry because they'll, they'll use your skill to um to tweak their machines to make them more addictive but I'd, I'd say that nowadays i could go and get jobs with you know facebook and, and all these social media companies because they want you to stay engaged on their phone mm -hmm. and what is engagement engagement is a dopamine hit, right, uh, for your brain. Your brain is searching, and our brains are designed to search, right, to search for food. And when we, and so it gives us a dopamine hit to keep us searching. And then when we find it, we get a we get a smaller hit of dopamine. So when you're scrolling, think we're searching, right? We're searching yeah. for a hit, and, and we and it powers up our brain. And then we find it, and then we read it, and it engages us, yeah. And so that actually keeps us awake. And that can be a well, we problem as well, can't it? We can be addicted to that dopamine hit <laughs> via that mechanism. Yeah, I mean, there's what, what, what doom scrolling, right? <laughs> yeah. That's exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, now with the with those reels, you get this like all these. Like, I was watching dog videos on reels. No, don't roll your eyes. Do you know how entertaining they are? No. Anyway, no, thirty no. minutes later, <laughs> thirty minutes later, going, oh, that's so cute. Oh, that's so. And I'm like, we we'll going, oh my god, ago. where did thirty minutes go? so quickly and the same time we're all time poor That's hey right. quick uh yes or no to the following three if i can i'm sorry if this puts you on the spot reading at late at night good or bad uh well if you can't sleep good yep good. <laughs> just <laughs> not uh just better out of a book right yeah, 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 those yeah, eye yeah. Movements, right. you're using yeah. the brain and those yep. eye movements uh can help to actually make you a little bit sleepy so reading book good all right eating before bed do you know if it makes any difference to sleep I know bananas may help you sleep better. Small, small snack, uh, carb, small fist, sort of no bigger than a fist size carb um, is is good. So often, like I'm always eating like corn thins because they're low calorie and, and a small snack um, help you sleep. Yeah. But too big a meal will delay your sleep, right? Because you, you've got to digest it. And then the other things, there is a bit of evidence, you know, because a lot of my clients go and see, um, nutritionists and stuff and come back with all these different pills and whatnots but um but uh your fatty foods so all the normal culprits fatty foods sugary foods raise cortisol right which then you that that is the stress hormone so it makes it harder to fall asleep 
getting more fiber into your diet, especially if you're an athlete, is associated with a deeper sleep. And last one, exercise. You yeah. know, before sleep, uh, I know with mm. meditation, stretching will aid in our relaxation. But what about uh, increasing hormonal changes? If I say do 50 push-ups, I know some people have this habit of doing push-ups before they go to bed or crunches. Do you think that's going to affect them? <laughs> Um, well, uh, usually the studies are looking at people exercising around sort of four in the afternoon and they find that that helps you fall asleep. Yeah. However, if you do it too close to bedtime, then what that does is it raises your heart rate, right? Which activates the body, which yeah. is the opposite of relaxation, which is usually what we're saying you need to be the state you need to be in to fall asleep. And so too I close have... to bedtime, you can get too much of a good thing, too close to bedtime, not yeah. so good. Okay. What about caffeine? I know we touched on a little bit, but I, I'm a guy for coffee. Paul loves coffee too. <laughs> um, what are the impacts of caffeine on our sleep? Variable, right? Okay. Um, yeah, so it's really individual. Some people can drink a ton of coffee before bed or and, and it doesn't affect them. Mm. Um, they fall asleep. Other people, you know, there's studies that show that uh, one cup um, 16 hours later when there's barely, you can barely trace it in the person's body and it still keeps them awake or fragments their sleep. So um, virtually everyone with insomnia will come and they'll say, I've cut caffeine. But after a while, I'm like, you know what, if it's not making much difference, you might actually, you know, if you're feeling fatigued from that bad night of sleep, you might do well to have a cup of a hot cup of joe to get you going in the morning you know and push off the fatigue so you just gotta you really gotta work it out um but usually we'll say about five hours to um to half strength yeah. so that means it's going to be about 10 hours in your body yeah.